Well, hey, YouTube, it's Chuck. Good morning. Well, I'm just gonna start off by apologizing a little bit for the frequency of videos uh, this spring. Um, once the bees started going uh, and work kicked up, I had some international travel for, for my day job. Uh, and those uh, trips to, I, I went to Berlin and Berlin's a long ways away from Jacksonville. It takes a long time to get there and a long time to get back. Uh, and a lot of other things going on. I just hadn't made so many videos, but I wanna say thank you to those of you that reached out and just were making sure I was okay. That was very, very sweet of you. I appreciate the sentiment. Uh, I'm still here. I'm gonna just try to start turning the camera on a little bit more frequently, maybe even without a subject. Uh, and I was going out, um, let's see, it's, it's Mother's Day weekend and I was picking up my parents from the airport uh, last night. And as I went out there, I ran by one of my swarm traps and there was an enormous beard of bees hanging off of this swarm trap that was hanging up. Uh, you know, about a half mile from the house. So I caught another swarm, a little bit late. This is, the, most of our swarms are in early April. So this is about a month late. Uh, but you know, bees will swarm when they get overcrowded and that's obviously what happened. So I'm expecting this to be, a, it, the box is very heavy. I'm expecting it to be larger than a nuke box. So what I'm planning on doing is doing a double stack nuke here uh, for this swarm. Um, there's five frames in there. They've probably got some co comb drawn. Um, if they do have some drawn comb that's not in a frame, I've got some frames and I've got some rubber bands and I'll show you how I, I do that to get them in there. Hopefully I'll find the queen, see if she's my queen or some other queen. I don't think I had any swarms, but you never know. Um, in any case, so I'm going to speed up through the parts where I'm not talking and when I'm di diving in the hive saying something, I'll slow it down and we're going to put this swarm into this box and I'm just going to talk you through how I do it. Uh, obviously swarm season is over for most of us here in the southeast but it's always good to think about and sometimes just watch other people do the same things you might be doing uh, in your own apiary and picking up some tips and ideas along the way all right the first thing i'll, I'll, I'll recommend as i'm getting ready to get in here when you do grab swarms and especially in the southeast um, you need to go into every swarm protected you need to assume that they're going to be aggressive uh, sometimes they are and sometimes they aren't but you don't want to figure that out after you open the box um, so obviously I recommend suiting up, putting on gloves necessary um, before, you, before you do the work because you are gonna be agitating them. You are gonna be relocating them from where they've already started building their comb. Um, and there's a very good chance they're not gonna be happy about it. Obviously there's some things you can do to make it a little bit better. Time of day, morning is usually better than evening. Um, it is getting ready to rain here today and it is overcast. So that is not helping the situation on the bee's temperament. But in any case, I'm gonna go ahead and put these gloves on, put my hood on, crack this open and see what we see. Stick with me. This design of this uh, swarm trap I built this year, if you remember, the, the lid comes off and the inner cover of the double bubble stays on. So this is gonna be our first peak. Might wanna hit them with just a bit of smoke. Wow. Okay, they have been in here a while because I'm seeing lots of white wax. So I, I missed this and at first glance, a couple beetles, which is not surprising because I don't have anything in here to prevent it. There's honey coming off on my hive tool. And this is the edge frame. Perfectly drawn foundation in a swarm trap with nothing hanging below it. You can't ask for better than that. Um, pollen and nectar going into honey on the edges. And obviously I'm looking for the queen, but I'm just gonna stick this in the hive and keep going in case the, the queen is directly on a frame. There's a lot of bees in here for a swarm. All right, now there's some comb uh, I was worried about, about being drawn out below. See, obviously I can't put that in my box. So I'm gonna need to cut that off. And if I've got, and I do have some more of it like that. So let me show you how I do that. I'm gonna lay this flat, not knowing if the queen is on this frame. And I'm just gonna try to preserve it as best I can in its perfect shape. And we're gonna set that aside just somewhere for now. I'm gonna look for the queen on it just to make sure she's not on this piece of wax. I don't see her at first glance. 
I'm gonna shake the bees in here though. So now this is just more wax. In case the queen was on there, now she's in the box. And this is eggs larva and perfectly drawn nectar. Wow, oh gosh, did you see me do that? That is not what you wanna do when you hadn't found the queen yet. I dropped it. Okay, well, like I said, I'm talking you through what I'm doing, but now that I dropped bees on the ground, where my feet go is risk of squishing the queen. So obviously I need to look down here on the ground generally for the queen and try not to step here and let these bees crawl up. If she is here, I don't want to step on her. All right, this has got capped brood, which means they've been in here a little while, right? Lots of larva. This hive is going to explode and do well. Got some drone comb on here also, um, which is great. It means they're making some comb. So with the combination of these two pieces, so now watch this. I'm gonna come around here, shake off these bees, lay this down and trim this wax off. Set it over here for use in a minute. put this one in here now because there still could be a queen in here I'm looking for the queen possibly even have bees kind of clustering around a little around a bee nope don't see her yet more drawn comb capped brood here lots of bees on this frame sure would love to find the queen especially after I dropped that frame and I don't really know where she is. All drone comb down there. If you can notice, if you can't see it, I'm telling you, it's drone comb on the bottom. I don't know if you can see, but these bees are starting to fly up and get agitated. They may start fanning here in a little bit if they know where the queen is and I don't. They're not being aggressive towards me. I'm just kind of noticing how they're all up in here. There's a lot of bees in here. So the queen very easily could be in here on one of these walls. Mostly honey and nectar on the edge here. This is a naturally drawn frame. Oh, good. See, those bees just fell into the box instead of on the ground off of that cluster. Yeah, don't see her. All right, second story is going on. Trying to keep the bees in the box around that brood that they've got in there. Now, I've got lots of drawn foundation and some there, but I'm gonna try to get these bees. I'm gonna just kind of show you inside what we got going on here. Lots of bees, almost too many for me to find the queen. All right, the bees are out, and there are a lot of bees in this box. So I'm gonna throw some foundation in here on the edges just to kind of let them hold up. And then she could still be here on the ground. I'm gonna show you what I do with this foundation here. So I take rubber bands, and these rubber bands are the best size I've found. And these are Firm stretch rubber bands. I got them on Amazon, the Alliance brand, and they are size 
117 B they're seven inches by an eighth so seven inch rubber bands and the reason is the thickness you go to this ear and you come down to that ear you go to this ear and you go to that ear and now you've got one side now I want you to see what's going on over here they don't know where she is she's hopefully in there but while I'm doing that settle down now that I've got this frame you can put these in here and try to stick them to the top or hold them in there if you just put them in now they'll drop down naturally so sometimes you need a little bit of a attachment to the top These first pieces had some nice worker comb in them. And then you can put some rubber bands on the top. Now they may completely destroy this, but either way, there's no brood in this so much. It's mostly wax and nectar. So this is just gonna be for them to, to play with. And now that's drawn up, somewhat held up, into this frame. I'm rushing a little bit because I don't know where the queen is, I'm trying to get this wax in here. And this is gonna go in here. All right, there's five frames with that one of wax in there. Brood in the bottom, so they should hold up. The biggest thing is finding the queen. All right, sorry for that walk away. I had to go find my brush. And I'm just gonna look here on the ground. I don't see any bees clustering here on the ground. So I don't think she's down here. If she was on the ground, she would be walking. And over time, there'd be a small little ball of bees that have found her. If you do see a small group of bees, inspect it. Now these bees are not ready for this hive yet, so I had to go get the brush. All right, and then on with the double bubble, which acts as an inner cover. Okay, so this hive is now in here. A couple things. The location of this swarm was captured le uh, less than three miles away. So, we have to confuse the bees that they have been reoriented. There's lots of ways of doing that. But a good way is to make the entrance almost blocked off by foliage. So when they come out, they can't just fly out. They've actually got to work their way in and out. Um, sometimes a stick with a piece of branch right in front works really good. Let me get one of those actually. So this viburnum works really, really good for this because, good Lord, you gotta prune viburnum like, you, like it's crazy. But if I stick this in the ground here, this will last for a couple of days. Ground's pretty hard here. <laughs> there we go. So, I don't know if you can see that, probably you can. But this branch is now held into the ground right in front of the entrance. So there's no coming and going out of this entrance with a, with a bee that's just zooming. It'll help them reorient. 10 frames in there is plenty of room for the size that was, but it obviously is growing very, very quickly in its swarm mode. The rubber banded comb will give them a little something to work on. It, there is a flow on here, so they'll be able to make all their own wax. My only question is orientation around the queen. A um, few bees in here, but I don't see her, but I'm just going to let them orient. 
they can crawl up if they want it, if they smell her, they start advertising. So there you go. Very big swarm in a swarm trap. I do want to say in the southeast this time of year, there were so many bees in there. If I'd left them in that swarm trap with the ventilation closed or the door closed with the ventilation open, that little hole is not enough air coming and going. They could overheat in here very, very badly, which is why I saw that big cluster hanging on the outside of the hive yesterday is because they were cooling off. I needed to not store them. So they needed to come out of this box quickly. So there you go. Hopefully this uh, is entertaining it when, at least. And maybe you learned a little bit of something here. Uh, late spring swarm. Love it. The flow's still on here in Jacksonville, Florida. Leave some comments below. Thanks for uh, the nice comments while I was away a little bit making, uh, not from making videos. And we'll see you on the next one. Have a great day.